Oh man, welcome back to another video. Jazza One here, and we're going to be doing another episode in our series of Can This Token 100X? And today we'll be looking at Mana Token, which is obviously the token used for Decentraland. So make sure you stay tuned till the very end. We're going to be answering the question of Can Mana 100X realistically from here? And I'll be giving you my view on that, and we'll be taking a deep dive into the tokenomics because as we know the tokenomics play a big part in whether the price actually moves as always guys please do support nordvpn link in the description if you're not staying safe in crypto nordvpn have been kind enough to offer 70 percent off two year plans plus a month for free so check out that link in the description coupon code oh man enjoy stay safe in crypto that's really important guys particularly if you're playing around in the metaverse uh playing around with nfts or anything like that with your wallets make sure you got yourself a vpn set up to make sure you're anonymous all right so let's get straight into this guys and today we'll be looking at mana now it's really important if you watch any of my previous tokenomics before videos before you will understand i always start with this slide because we need to understand the premise of value now, a lot of people, like I said, there's a new crypto investor and trader born every single day, and the majority of them come in not understanding market cap. If you've been around long enough, hopefully, hopefully you guys understand this. But by way of a quick recap, the value of a project is defined by market cap, not by price. OK, you can have a coin such as Bitcoin, which is trading at, let's say, currently 42,000. That may seem expensive but that's not relative to the market cap, okay? I'll give you an example. Cardano is trading at $1.18. Okay, Solana is trading at $118, but Cardano is the more valuable project at the time of recording this video. Its market cap is slightly higher. Okay, so we can't look at the price, and this is often a fallacy, right? This is one of the reasons things like Shiba are around with multiple decimal points because people think it's cheap and it's a good entry point, and all it needs to do is get to a dollar, right? All, that's all it needs to do. Well, in this video, in these types of videos, we demyth that, and I show you how to actually model it out and break it down to whether a coin can actually really realistically 100x from here 200x from here what does it mean for it to do that and can it actually do that so first thing we need to know is your market cap is the supply of the number of tokens multiplied by the current price okay very important so let's do this for um mana let's do this for decentraland we know currently you can check this on coin market cap or any other uh, websites to do your research there are 1.83 billion mana tokens in supply at the moment. Currently, they're trading at about $3.27 at the you know, time of recording this video. If you multiply those together, that will give you a $6 billion market cap. Okay, Very important, $6 billion market cap here on mana. Okay, Now, let's go take a look into understanding whether that is it realistic? Can we 10x from here? Can we 100x from here? Let's take a look. Well, we know that at today's price, let's call it $3.28 here, okay? A 1x multiple is what we're currently at, and that gives you the 6 billion. We just work that out right now. Now, if we want to 10x from here, so you've just put $1,000 into mana, and you're hoping it's going to do a 10x, right? Your friend said, oh, this is, a, this is an easy 10x from here. Well, what in essence he's saying is that mana will get to $32.80, $32 right? That's what we're seeing here. Now, in order for that to happen, that would mean the market cap of the entire mana project, Decentraland, would be 60 billion. Okay, the 10x from the 6 billion right now, call it a 60 billion market cap for Decentraland. Let's carry on. If we want a 50x from here, that would mean mana one coin would be worth $164. That would imply a market cap of 300 billion. Hopefully, you guys are following this along. Now, let's say we want to go for that moonshot, right? Which is the title of this video. Can it 100x from here? Well, in that case, we would need each coin to be worth $328. Is that realistic? Well, in order for that to happen, we would need a 600, 600 billion dollar market cap on Decentraland. You can see where I'm going here. We're going to come up to the comparables, which you can see on the screen, and we're going to talk this through. And then for the lows, can it 1,000x from here? Again, a $3,280 per mana token would imply 6 trillion, guys. Yep, that's trillion. $6 trillion market cap, market cap globally for mana, okay? Now, 
Let's compare this, right? So just like in stocks or real estate, crypto is exactly the same. If you want to value a project, look for similar things out there or however similar you can get, right? Some things naturally uh, are, you know, non-fungible and it's hard to compare. But in this case, we can find realistic comparisons to compare to say, is it outrageous to get to 6 trillion? Can we get to 600 billion? You know, what's realistic here on this project? So let's give it some perspective. And Bitcoin is currently sitting at 809 billion market cap. Now we know that's been higher. We know that this is obviously Bitcoin sitting at 42,000 at the time of recording this video. We know it's been higher when Bitcoin that's 69,000, that's more 1 trillion, 1.2 trillion. Okay. Now, so what we're saying here is if we want 100x on, um, on mana, that's a 600 billion market cap. So almost that is saying that if Bitcoin's at its highs, if it's at 1.2 trillion, let's say back to where it was, 1 trillion to 1.2 trillion, we're saying mana would be half of the market cap of Bitcoin. That's something to think about, okay? Can it achieve that? Let's keep going. Ethereum, currently on 368 billion, okay? Now keep in mind, Ethereum is not one project and not, you know, this is, this is the important thing here. This is a layer one solution. So if you're thinking of one project such as Decentraland, which is one use case, which actually runs on the Ethereum network, imagine the whole ecosystem, right? Can a single mobile app be worth more than the entire app store on Apple? We have to think about this. There's no right or wrong answer. We just have to think right now, can that be the case? And is it realistic for that to be the case? So Ethereum is sitting at 368 billion. We know that was closer to 600, 700 billion. And it can head, you know, if Bitcoin continues to $100,000, then there's no doubt Ethereum can continue its market cap and head higher if ETH 2.0 is launched and is successful. So again, can mana to do 100x to get to 600 billion which we need it for to get to for 100x can it get to the likes of ethereum's market cap in the bull run we have to think about that okay now let's look at the 10x option now for decentraland to 10x from here we're asking for a 60 billion market cap currently cardano's at 40 billion it has been beyond 60 billion when it was at three dollars i mean it was closer to 60 70 billion Okay, so interesting that, uh, so sorry, much more than that is a three, yeah, about 60, 70 billion, maybe even touched 80, I'll need to check that. But can Mana reach that? Can Mana reach 60 billion if Cardano can reach that? And at the time, Cardano didn't have any smart contracts. Interesting, an argument to be made. But again, I would remind you that Ada is a layer one solution with all these things to build on top. It's the ecosystem, it's the platform. Can a single use case such as Decentraland be bigger than platforms which have use cases. We have to think about that. Now, let's look at a direct comparable, which is Sandbox. Sandbox is sitting at 4.2 billion, not far off the market cap of uh, Decentraland currently, which is 6 billion. So again, there's competition in the market. Does that dilute the addressable market that Decentraland have to go after? Now I've got some interesting comparables for you because now we're going to look at Facebook. Facebook is a currently sitting at 650 billion. We know they've rebranded to Meta, with, which is a direct business move to address the metaverse opportunity, okay? Now, we know Facebook, by the way, it's just that their shares took a massive hit recently, okay? We know they were closer to 1 trillion in market cap just before their uh, horrible earnings, okay? So would a $1 trillion company risk rebranding and completely changing the course of their company for the next 10 years for an opportunity that's smaller than their current market cap? That's something we have to think about, okay? And this is, this, this is a bullish sign for something like Decentraland. Because if I'm Facebook and I've got a $1 trillion business, which I can pick up to 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, just keep doing what I'm doing, right? And try to get to 2 million, maybe 3 million, 3 trillion, sorry. Would I completely change direction, rebrand my company, go after the metaverse for a 200 billion opportunity or a 300 billion opportunity? You'd argue maybe not. Maybe they see a multi-trillion dollar opportunity here in the metaverse, which is why they're trying to do that. And therefore, maybe a 600 billion option here for 100x on mana doesn't sound too crazy out of the realms of possibility. Okay, hopefully you can see how my thinking is going around here. You then have a comparable such as Roblox. Okay, again, centralized, people, you know, kids play it, people play it. Uh, Similar, very similar to the central land in that sense, in that it's a it's a metaverse. You can spend time in it, and you can buy things in it. Thirty seven billion. Okay, so you can see that a six x to get to kind of Roblox's level is super realistic, right? Anything between that six to ten x in the near term, 
you know, you wouldn't have an issue really arguing against that, particularly if Bitcoin's on a bull run, Bitcoin's going to 100,000, you know, its market cap is 1.5 trillion, 1.6, 1.7 trillion. Is it unrealistic to suggest Mana can do a 10x from there? I'd argue no to the 6 billion, 60 billion question. But what about the 100 X. What about the 600 billion? And that's when I come on to some interesting research done by a few different companies. Now, you can see a, a few contrasting kind of opinions. Uh, so let's walk through these because it's obviously early days in the metaverse, but we need to get a grasp of this. Emergent research did a study and they said 20, in 2020, the total addressable market, the amount of um, value in the metaverse space was 47 billion. They've projected that at a compounded growth rate of 43% per annum, CAGR, they expect a 2028 rate of 830 billion, a total addressable market for the metaverse. Using that number, this would be very far-fetched, right? To think that uh, three quarters or 75% of the whole market, 800 billion, would come to Decentraland. That would be, you'd have to be super bullish on Decentraland to get everything right and be the de facto leader in the whole metaverse by 2028. Okay, so that's something to think about. You then have Morgan Stanley who came out and said, uh, we think the China-only metaverse market could be worth eight trillion. Very interesting. Goldman Sachs came out and said eight trillion globally. So you can see a lot of conflicting numbers. You know, these are all people throwing numbers in the air and depends on the particular analyst. But we need to kind of bring these sources of data together and form our opinion. And when you look at these kind of numbers, which, by the way, match up with my thesis around Facebook, because that's what I think Facebook's after. Facebook's probably done the maths to say we're probably closer to eight trillion globally. And we want three to four trillion of that. We want to go after half of that and be the best. And the decentralized players can have the rest. That's kind of my thinking around this. And it's early days and that thinking can evolve and improve as more data comes out. And if that's the case, and Facebook's going after four trillion, is there any reason to suggest we couldn't get half a trillion here on Decentraland? They'd have to do a lot right. They would have to be the leading play in the decentralized metaverses. And Facebook can have its own area in terms of centralized and do continue on. Microsoft can have its own piece of the pie, naturally. And anybody, any of the other entrants as well. No doubt Google would have a play around as well. But could Decentraland take that 600 billion? I think that's a realistic bet. But you're looking at eight, nine, ten years play here on Decentraland. And they've got to execute and prove they can execute at that level. Okay, so to answer the question straight of what the subject line is, can we 100x here realistically? Potentially, but it's a long term play. Realistically, you're looking at more of a 10 to 50x in the midterm. Uh, this is possible if, if we run to a, a, you know, for a bull market and Bitcoin does well, no reason we can't see a 10x here on Decentraland. The 50x is also possible, again, with a lot of time, five, six years of good, solid execution, and that would then get them on the run rate to get to the 100x. Okay, so that's what we want to look at right now. But it's very interesting when you've got something, someone like Morgan Stanley, by the way, which is my old friends where I used to work, they're saying 8 trillion for China only. That would be a game changer. If we get further research around that to suggest China only is 8 trillion, I mean, that is phenomenal. But again, we'd have to wait for more reports and more detailed information. The report didn't have enough granular data to suggest how we're going to get to that 8 trillion uh, over time. And what does that mean for the globe as well? There you go. So that's what we're seeing in terms of Decentraland. Now, the other things we need to take into consideration are the circulating supply. Now, remember, when you work out your market cap, you're using your circulating supply, which in Decentraland's case is 1.83 billion. But we know in the code, it's written there's a max supply of 2.19, call it 2.2 billion mana. Now, that excess can be dumped into the market at given times. And you can see here how circulating supply has gone up. Here, July, massive dump of more coins. And then you had some more in about August period. And then you've had small steps up to where we're at now, which is 1.83 billion. Now, this is a good number because we're sitting at 83% circulating. So 83% of all mana coins ever minted are already in circulation, which is good. I've seen other projects which are far lower. This is good because we know we can't have massive dumps happening anymore. We've pretty much had it, right? The coins have come out and man has still grown despite that. The other thing to look at is who had the initial coins from the ICO? What happened with it? Well, here there was a 40-20-20-20 split. So 40% went to the crowd sale. So that was made open to you and I to pick some up. And then 20% was made out to the Decentraland Foundation. 20% to team and early contributors and 20% to community and partners. And again, there's nothing out the realms of, uh, you know, and nothing unordinary here. This looks like a pretty decent split. You can't really complain about this. It's a good mix of uh, contributors having some, the foundation having some, and obviously the community and partners to grow the network. This is normal and no really major flags here. The next thing to look at, which 
as a price speculator could get you to raise your eyebrow is the fact that they're using the continuous token model. Okay, so MANA has a built-in inflation rate, which again, if you are looking for MANA to just go up in price, this is a hindrance to you, right? Because what this is saying is there's an inflationary rate in the first year was 8%, then it was 7.4%, then it drops down to 6.9, 6.4, 6 6%, but there's always going to be an inflationary rate every year with more MANA tokens minted and introduced into the market. That's going to increase supply, which reduces price. It's going to have a downward pressure on price. Okay, it's natural. But you need if you are that's so if you're just price speculating, that's a concern for you. But if you understand the overall objective of decentralized, this makes complete sense. They don't want mana tokens to become so expensive that people cannot use them to trade, to buy land, to use things in the metaverse. So for them, they need to have some inflationary aspect, no different to the US dollar, right? They need they, You need to be able to buy bread with it. And same with a decentralized metaverse, you need to be able to use this token instead of just hoarding it. They don't want people to hoard it, therefore they need an inflationary rate, okay? But again, this will have a down pressure on price, but the question is how much? At the moment, we can see mine is continuing to grow without too much hindrance, but could this play a hindrance over time? And then last but not least, there's a couple of other points which are interesting. There was no kind of fixed, again, token release schedule, which kind of can get you worried in that normally you'd expect to see um, a, a release schedule, right? The founders who have their percentage of the project, they would normally say, these, this is when we'll um, start selling our tokens and you have a fixed point, right? In this year, we're going to sell this much. In this year, we're going to sell this much. In this year, we're going to sell much. We don't have that release schedule here for MANA. But what we do know is they have committed to vesting for three years, which in itself is a bit worrying as well. Like, is a three-year vesting period enough for a founder? I guess you, it's kind of up for debate. I mean, for me, if you're playing a metaverse play, surely you'd be vested for five, six, seven years. But then on the other end of it, you know, these founders are humans. They have to feed their families. They want to make some money out of the project as well. You know, it's it's a tricky one. So they've, they've, they've obviously got 20% uh, here, which they can theoretically at one point dump onto the market. Naturally, that would have a move. But what would the incentives be to do that? Okay, that's what you have to ask. Even if they did vest for three years and they cashed that all out and dumped it all in, why would they dump it all in the market in one go? You'd maybe sell 5%, right, to live off of, and you'd keep some because you believe in the Metaverse project as a whole. So that's not too much of a concern for me. And then the final point, really, before we kind of wrap this up, is 2.5% of mana in each transaction is burnt. Okay, so any time somebody takes some mana to buy some land on the Metaverse, 2.5% of that transaction is burned, which is good, right? It's reducing supply and helping price move forward. So there you have it, guys. There is a thorough breakdown of the tokenomics of MANA, which is the token used, the ERC token used on Decentraland, the metaverse. And again, we broke down, can we realistically 100x from here? And the answer is, the metaverse is an exciting place and it's ever-evolving. We don't yet know the total addressable market. And no doubt, over the next six months to a year, there's going to be more reports from the likes of Morgan Stanley, from the likes of Goldman Sachs and other researchers looking at the total addressable market of the decentralized or well, of the metaverse in its entirety and then we need to understand that you're going to have your likes of the centralized place such as microsoft such as maybe roblox such as facebook obviously renaming to meta addressing some of that market but then naturally some of that market will be addressed by decentralized plays but then the question comes of the portion that's going to be decentralized how much can a project like mana realistically take up and is it 600 billion of you know, a, a, an 8 trillion um, market cap. Is that realistic? Can they execute thoroughly over the next seven to eight years? One thing is sure, it's not going to 100x over this year, right? So anybody telling you that, or if you've bought in through speculation of that, I can quite easily say that would be a shocker if that happened, right? For it to get to 600 billion in this year would mean it's the size of Bitcoin uh, currently. I mean, Bitcoin's at 800 billion, so it's two thirds of Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, 75% of Bitcoin in this year, which would be phenomenal. It would be crazy, right? So you can rule that one out. Uh, so anybody who's kind of just FOMO'd into something like Mana to expect a quick 100x because their friend told you, that's how you break it down. That's how you look at the numbers and that's how you build yourself a tokenomics case and a realistic valuation for some of your favorite coins before diving in. If you appreciate this type of content, then don't forget to smash up the like button and subscribe. If you want to see more of these tokenomics videos on any specific coins, comment them in below. The ones which get voted the most, I can go ahead and make a video like this for your 
your favorite coin. As always, guys, don't forget NordVPN, link in the description. Stay safe in crypto. Get yourself set up on a VPN. Make sure you're protected. Make sure you're anonymous. It's crazy how much of your data is available so easily through your IP address. And that IP address can be linked to your wallet transactions, guys. So super risky. Get yourself set up on a VPN. I mean, it costs like 60 bucks for two years. So you can't go wrong. And uh, if you appreciate this type of content, make sure you're hitting that like button, guys. Can we get over 300 likes on this video, guys? That would really mean a lot to this channel to spread this message and help people really see the value of calculating market caps, understanding tokenomics, and how that actually impacts your crypto investments. Because at the moment, the reality is a lot of new crypto traders just buying coins because their friend have told about it. And they think it can 100x because the number looks small, right? It's at $3, you can get to $300. Bitcoin's at 42,000. Doesn't work like that, guys. Spread this video so more people understand that. And I'll see you in the next one.